Hello everyone. So welcome to another lecture uh, in our game development module that we are doing from home because of the lockdown in Sri Lanka. Right. So this week's topic C topic is uh, design patterns in game development. So yeah, uh, before talking about design patterns, especially in game development, I thought of giving some introduction to uh, to design patterns in general in general software engineering so yeah so what's the design pattern so it is basically there are few definitions all are valid a reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context in software engineering also a design pattern is uh, architecture and a computer science uh, uh, is a formal way of documenting a solution to a design problem in a particular field of expertise so and design patterns are recurring solutions to software design problems you find again and again in real world application development so yeah so these are the definitions right so why do we have to use design patterns because of these things they give the developer a selection of tried and tested solutions to work with because these design patterns are the pro solutions to the problems that occurs again and again in many software application development projects so already many people have tried solutions and they have documented in properly so that they are tested by many people therefore it is safe to use design patterns uh, for our projects as well right so this there are uh, three categories mainly we can identify in software design patterns as creational structural and behavioral design patterns so the creational design patterns deals with object creation mechanisms so that means like uh, they're trying to create objects in a manner suitable to the given situation the current situation in the system uh, we can consider factory pattern and object pooling pattern and singular pattern under this category so let's look a little bit more detail into each of these patterns in upcoming slides and the next category is structural patterns so the structural design patterns are concerned with uh, uh, how classes and objects are composed to create bigger uh, structures if we consider a software system uh, that is basically a collection of classes and objects so how do we organize them? How do we define the architecture of the system? How do we organize objects in within the system? So those are the questions uh, addressed in these structural design patterns. And the third category is uh, behavioral design patterns. So these are basically um, design patterns. Design that identify uh, the communication patterns that uh, in, uh, that facilitate and increase the flexibility of uh, communication between different objects uh, now let's look into few of those design patterns in detail so the singleton pattern this is uh, most likely the first design pattern we use in universities so yeah the idea of this pattern is ensuring a class has one instance and provide a global point of access to it so the common example for this is uh, using database connectors so when we have a system that uses database connections to read and write data into a database uh, if we have multiple connection to that same database the things could be complicated 
because having multiple connections from the same uh, system to the same database is not good uh, not good in terms of the architecture of the project so for such a scenario we can use this singleton pattern so basically as in this uh, uml diagram so what it does is when we request for whatever that uh, singleton object uh, so uh, when we request a reference to that object let's say the database connection uh, then first uh, the system checks if there is an object already created from that class if there is no object then it will create a new object uh, and then return that reference otherwise uh, it will return the previously created object as a reference right so yeah if we overuse this singleton pattern so we can see them as like level managers sound managers game managers this kind of uh, various managers in games so if we overuse this pattern these are the problems we would have in our games which especially uh, in the systems it can uh, give unnecessary global access to throughout the system and because of that it will increase the coupling between classes when there is when the coupling is uh, when coupling is high it is always uh, hard to debug and find problems and issues and solve them so as an alternative to that we can use static classes and static methods and another design pattern is a command pattern so the idea of this design pattern is to encapsulate request as an object so this allows users to parameterize clients with different requests and queue or log requests and support undoable operations so when we use this inside a game we can it allows configurable controls that means uh, we have actions like attack jump punch various actions in a game and if we have used this pattern then later on we can allow users to change the control which button for which action so we can allow that if we use the command pattern and also allows changing targets so targets of the input so that means what are the objects that we should apply this particular command or action and also allows us to queue up actions that means let's say user press jump and attack button at once but the character can't do it in the same time so we can implement the system in such a way first do the jump and then after the jump we can invoke the attack so like that and here this undoable action supports undoable operations that means if we have tied whatever the action or operation into the input event then uh, we don't have a way to log or queue up uh, that particular action into some data structure so uh, but using the command pattern we can do that so that's why we can do things like queuing up or undo things because we can track each of those actions and do the necessary amendments to maybe revert them right um, the observer pattern so this is also yet another commonly used pattern so the idea of this pattern is defining a one to many dependency between objects so observer means like uh, there are there is some special object let's say object b and there are some other objects that who is watching that 
special object and when that special object changes its, its, its internal state all other objects who is watching that object is uh, notified automatically so the use cases are deep coupling the code and pl playing sounds handling inputs unlocking achievements things like that for an example for this in let's say in a game let's say there is a player character and there are multiple npc characters as well so once the player character equip and weapon the npc characters uh, around the player let's say they should run away so the simplest way to do that, do that would be continuously checking the player's state regarding the weapon equipped uh, the npc characters can continuously check if the player has equipped the weapon uh, like it is called polling so they can continuously check that state and if the player equip the weapon then they will notice that and they can run away but uh, continuously checking in a loop is less efficient so this observer pattern using this observer pattern uh, what it can do what it does is the npc characters can register for some event uh, let's say on equipped event uh, to the player object and when the player equip the sword or weapon uh, the registered other objects will be notified so in that way npc characters will know that player has equipped the weapon so they can start running away that is more efficient compared to the previous polling based approach because uh, there are there are no continuous check-ins and another pattern is a state pattern so the idea of this pattern is allows an object to alter its behavior when its internal state changes so this will look like the the object will appear to change its class so for example uh, well uh, we can consider a character in a game and the character can be either in crouching or standing or prone states and we can ask the character to reload the weapon so based on the state of the character how does that character perform the reloading operation should be changed it can be just a change in the animation plate uh, or it can be just a change in the sound plate regarding to that action but uh, whatever that is so it performs the action in a different way based on the state of the character so how should we uh, how can we implement such a scenario well we can do a brute force way that means uh, we can implement a single method and check if it is sitting or standing then do it like this else if it is if the character is crouching do it this way else if the character is frowning do it this way so that's a brute way so the problem with this approach is as the number of states the character can have increases the code becomes more complex and less flexible we can do the same thing by using a switch or enumeration and here the switch as the input will be used the state that is also similar to the root force if well setting uh, this will be less flexible so the solution would be state pattern the best approach because the code will remain same even if we had to add multiple new states to the character I mean the code will change but the whatever the class which request the action some action to perform will remain same 
so here is the structure there is a context uh, some class that has a reference to a state class and this can be an abstract class or an interface and then there are concrete state classes state a state b classes so what uh, each of these classes have implemented this handle function so this is the action this class request to perform so this class doesn't know about the implementation or what is the current state of that concerned object so all he does is call in the handle function then according to the current situation of the object it will perform the handling function accordingly using one of these country concrete states and with that I'd like to uh, wrap up the session on introduction to design patterns and in the next uh, section I'd like to talk about uh, design patterns especially in game development the patterns that we frequently use in game programming and thanks for watching if you have any questions you can leave a comment or yeah a comment and see you in the next second session goodbye